Hello, welcome everybody. Uh, in this very interesting session, uh, I will be talking to you about some of the unknown facts about multiple sclerosis, where you will not know about it in normal from normal medical websites or uh, uh, medical books. This is from my 18 years of experience that I have uh, gone through uh, these instances and I have noted it down. So the one, the number one point is there is a period in relapse and remission form of multiple sclerosis. The first stage I will say you know that in RRMS RRMS will have maybe 8 to 10 years or little less than that and then it is progressing to secondary progressive multiple sclerosis. But I am telling about a particular stage soon after the initial appearance of the initial symptom that you might have seen in the first one or two MRIs there some of your lesions are disappearing but it happens rarely and that is the period where your immune system is trying to heal the nerve damage and that is the period where you have to maximize your lifestyle changes where you have to go for the most essential therapies you have to try everything to control at this point. This stage of multiple sclerosis, I will call the golden period to control MS. And that might be a few months, maybe a few years. It depends on the inner strength or the innate strength or the fundamental strength of the patient. Mostly it happens in the younger age group. So during this period, I forbid my patients from taking immunosuppressant. And that is the period where you have to balance your immune system by taking proper diet, uh, proper exercises, and immune, natural immune balancing protocol. There are a number of things you can do that we'll be referring and discussing about it later on. This is the number one point I want to tell you. The second unknown facts, what is not discussed normally in uh, MS websites and MS discussions are whether do we need to suppress the immune system or to balance the immune system. The theory of autoimmune process in multiple sclerosis is very strong and the question is since the last 15 years I am watching we have medications one after the other in suppressing the immune system. There might be different theories but in effect a person taking immunosuppressant and immunosuppressant and a patient don't not taking immunosuppressant. Maybe down the line in 10 years, you don't see much difference. In fact, immune suppression eventually may have more disastrous effects. And there are no studies available on that. I will ask you to look upon these cases. Because you see, <coughs> patients in their 40s uh, remaining bedridden and in vegetative state. You know, that is the point I ask them why uh, that many young patients you know, have a very fast progression. So this is something that you need to uh, uh, think about. The second thing is about uh, what is the difference between a symptom and what is the difference between a relapse? A symptom is from basically when 
uh, a single symptom is coming. You might be having a mild sensitivity problem and you go for corticosteroids. And this corticosteroid is about 5 grams, that means 5000 milligrams, which is an equivalent dose of a person who is taking 5 milligram per day, which is equivalent to one and a half years of corticosteroids. So imagine what a huge quantity of steroids you are taking. And in years, maybe on an average yearly one relapse or two relapse, and the buildup of toxic corticosteroids, whether that is required or you don't require. So you have to have a borderline when to take corticosteroids. When you have your core system affected, like balancing, vision disturbance, walking difficulty, you go for that. Because vision is so vital, don't wait for it. But appearance of small sensitivity problem or for a small balancing issue, wait, look at the cause. It might be an infection, a pseudo relapse. It might be a few sleepless nights, so you, you rest for some time and there are some ways you can tide over those symptoms that we will discuss later on. The third fact what I wanted to tell is we know the different types of multiple sclerosis. You know, uh, the relapse and remission form, the secondary progressive, the primary progressive, uh, then maybe a different disease, but according to Ayurveda, it is the same, the neuromyelitis optica. Likewise, or the primary relapsing type, but essentially, what is the difference? I will tell you the core two difference between uh, the relapse and remission type of MS and the primary process. In the relapse and remission form of MS, there is an, a strong involvement of your immune system, whereas in the primary progressive, there is the immune system involvement is minimal and in the relapsing remission there is a reversal of uh, uh, the symptoms happen and in primary progressive that is not happening so whatever damage is happening in a non-inflammatory way in the primary progressive multiple sclerosis is almost irreversible so if you have a primary progressive multiple sclerosis treat it Control it as early as possible. Never give time for it to progress. And the most important thing, you know, you take uh, routine MRIs and you may not be getting much time with your neurologist to discuss or with your radiologist to discuss the various facets of uh, the lesions and other things. I wanted to tell you a few things what you can understand. Uh, you can stage multiple sclerosis or you can assess the progression of multiple sclerosis from the MRI. If you have lesions, especially in the gray matter, like in the thalamus or in the cerebellum or closer to the gray matter like the juxtacortical lesion, certain lesions are very vital and they tend to progress faster. The second one is the absence or presence of spinal lesion. If you have, if you don't have a spinal lesion, your MS might be progressing very slow. You have time. And how to protect your spine from lesions? There are a certain ways how you can protect your spine. And this is very important. Once lesions started to happen in the spine, you have to understand most of the time the, uh, the progression of MS is faster. And again, the size, whether a lesion is 2 millimeter or 10 millimeter, you need to understand spine is a small structure, so a 10 millimeter size may occupy a bigger space, more damages on the motor line, on the bladder can happen. So spine lesion has to be looked very carefully. Another thing you might be also noticing, 
In the spine itself, especially I am referring to the cervical spine where the 80% of the lesions are occurring. In that, when you have or you don't have a lesion in the spine, but you have some, some prolapse or disc herniation or other uh, spinal problems that you have to address. You have to do routine neck exercises. You have to keep the best pillows or the best chairs you have to use. Because whenever you look at there is a higher chances of getting lesion above those pathology and below those pathology. That is a very significant uh, aspect you see in the MRI of uh, multiple, in multiple sclerosis. Then the last question is do we need a yearly MRI? So when you are progressing to the secondary uh, progressive multiple sclerosis you know that very rarely new lesions are coming or in primary progressive very very rarely new lesions are coming so unnecessarily don't go for MRI because the gadolinium the contrast uh, material which is used which is also toxic in and you don't get any new treatment for a, even a lesion is coming so unnecessarily unnecessary MRI could be avoided mainly unknown reason might be there you are going into a strong uh, electromagnetic field uh, or a magnetic field and so it could be avoided then uh, one more thing is that uh, MS is not restricted to these lesions MS is a disease not only restricted to white matter, MS is a disease pertaining to the whole brain. So whenever uh, you have after five years down the line, there are new methods to study the brain volume. So brain volume should, brain volume study should be the future uh, of uh, assessing the progression of multiple sclerosis. So you need to ask with your radiologist uh, how to study the brain volume and a, a good radiologist can differentiate the brain volume uh, you know with one MRI to another which is maybe about two years gap they can study that and brain volume shrinkage will be more there in people who are having cognitive system is involved. So cognitive system is one of the very core important aspect in the brain. So once the cognitive system is involved, you see that the MS is progressing very fast. So uh, read those portions and uh, enlighten yourself. I hope that this video has helped you. We'll, we'll go into more details about the, uh, you know, the efficacy of suppressing immune system or how to balance the immune system once we go into uh, the, the, the treatment aspects of MS. What you can do in your, uh, at your home itself, how to balance your immune system. Thank you very much. Hope <coughs> you have understood and uh, thank you for going through this video.